All right. So this is going to be the same lesson as yesterday for anyone pulling up this video, but we're going to be solving different problems. So we're still going to head our actual work paper for today with solving percent problems. And that's going to be different than our formula sheet. And today's date, you guys said, was 17. All right, anyone who needs these formulas still? Percent tip times bill. Sorry, I can zoom in on, like, if we're down to the bottom ones. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Guys, it was in eighth grade that I found out that I needed to wear glasses. And now, of course, I'm wearing contacts because we wear masks all day. But if you're having issues seeing the board, one, please tell us teachers. We can move your seat. Right now, we would have to, like, ask another kid if we can swap, but they might see the board just fine. And if you're having issues seeing the board, we want to take care of you. But two, you should probably tell your parents. Right? Like, I actually um, have a note here to email some of these parents. They're like, hey, I think you should go to the eye doctor. And some of you might be behind on going to the eye doctor because of the pandemic. But, like, if you need glasses, you need to get that taken care of because it's bad for your eyes. Like, the health of your eyes if they're always out of focus. Victor, I'm actually going to bring you the formula sheet that we just copied down um, so that we can move on. But you can copy. So we're taking two different pages of notes. Today, one is just a formula sheet that we just copied down. Um, and the other one is going to be like the problems that we solve. So the other thing I want to get back to doing is the name your numbers. So, way back at the beginning of the year, you guys gave me some numbers that described yourselves and how that number described yourself. Some of you guys gave me only like two or three, and other ones, so if you on a separate sheet of paper, just whatever you can, if you want to copy those down. Some of you gave me a lot. So like this student, one of your classmates, actually in this room, gave me six different numbers that describe them. Now, some of you left the I have four dogs like I had up there, but I think this person, they actually have four dogs. They have eight paintings, five family members. I'm guessing that means like direct family members. One preserved snake. This is where this gets really interesting. Three necklaces and two pairs of earbuds. Any guesses, Madeline? It's a how do you know? Well, first off, we gotta ask Amelia, is it you? But why do you think that, Madeline? Amelia, is this you? So you have a preserved snake, like, like it's not alive anymore, and like the skin or the whole snake. That's sweet. How is it preserved? So is it like in a jar or is it, oh, okay. That makes, I thought it was just like, like out and like, okay, that's, that's super cool. All right. So every day that I remember, and eventually we're going to run out of green people in this room. Uh, but over break, I'm going to try to compile the rest of these. Remember, I got your name, your numbers in like three different ways, whether you shared them on Google or submitted on Schoology or emailed them to me. So I'm trying to compile all of them into one thing so that I can pull from there. You might get an email from me saying, hey, I can't find your name, your numbers. Just reshare it with me if you get that email from me. Please and thank you. Uh, percents out in the real world. I bought a tire gauge, and I hope I can find it because I don't know what I did with it at the end of yesterday. So the weather's changing, and with that, the, the pressure in your parents' car tires or brother, sister, whoever, is also probably going to change. Hey, Victor, when you're done copying that formula sheet, will you pass it to Jocelyn so she can copy it? Jocelyn, what we're doing today is taking two different pages of notes, um, and we need to circle back to the announcements anyways. Um, so one page is just going to be formulas, 
And you guys can, like, don't rush. You can even copy that during AO or extensions. Like, don't rush to get the formulas copied. Once we start solving problems, stick with us. Um, but, yeah, so there's the announcements. The mastery on Thursday is going to be small, guys. I'm asking teachers around the building what problems I can write involving them. So, like, Mr. Flynn just told me I can write a problem about him involving video games, time that he would play spending video games before he had kids versus after he had kids, right? So don't stress out about the fact that we're going to take a mastery. I just want to see where we are at, right? So that over break, I can plan for the next three weeks before winter break. It's like a quiz. Is what? Sorry. Right, you mean today or the quiz? Yeah, essentially. It's going to be things like we've done in class. So like the problems we're doing today, the problems on the quiz will be very similar to the problems we do today. Except they'll be written about Phoenix teachers. Because I'm writing the mastery, right? I write my masteries. Alright, so there's our announcements. So this tire pressure gauge... That is very important because as you go into winter, you want to make sure your tires are inflated correctly, especially as weather gets a little messed up. It says that you can improve your gas mileage by over 3%, right? 3.3% to keep your tire, or uh, by keeping your tires properly inflated. And drop four tenths of a percent for every one PSI that you are under inflated. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys, um, and I don't really care about showing you guys things involving me. Can I find it the other way? I was going to show you guys on an actual document that I just got this morning where percent form versus rate form of a value. I might not be able to find it quick enough. I'll put it into a future lesson. So we're refinancing our house right now. And in the document, some things will show the percent sign. Other things will be written in decimal form, right? Like 0 0.075 or whatever. Madeline, question? Are you supposed to write the what? Oh, the tire thing? No, I was just showing you guys that. Sorry, you're, don't erase it. But you're good. Like, I, sorry. This was just so we could talk about, hey, it's out in the real world, right? Like, percents get used all over the place. All right, so a couple questions before we start writing stuff, actually. So you probably don't need to write this down unless you want to. These came from your Khan Academy work that seems to be kind of stumping us a little bit. Um, a lot of us, at least the first time through this assignment, were having some issues. So let's talk about when we decrease something by 12%, which of these correctly shows us the new value? Now, can anyone tell me the trap door here? There's a trap door that we talked about last week. Why is A a trap door, Isis? Yeah, this is not 12% of crime. This is just 0 0.12. It's just a decimal number. To be a percentage, you have to have like something attached to it, right? Like the C. So if what is in D... That 0.12c, if that's what A used, then it would be fine. B divides by 0.12. I don't know, we can come back to that one if we need to. C, 0.88c, 88% of... Well, guys, this is what a lot of us keep forgetting. When we start, we start at 100%. We start at the entire crime rate. So we start at C, or 1C, we drop 12% of C, 88% of C is one of the answers that we want. Because which of the expressions could represent the crime rate uh, after, right? Batman brought the Joker to justice. And then, what is 22 25ths? Anyone real good on their fraction game? What if we scale that up to over 100? What's that? Yeah, that's 88 over 100. Get that, that's what we want. 88 hundredths. Right? So C and E here. Similarly, right here, 33% less sodium. A is a trap door. Now, A is not always a trap door. 
but it is here. What is 100 minus 33%? Let's think about that first. It's 100 minus 33. Do minus the 30, then minus the 3. So minus 30. Yeah, 60. Wait a minute. What's B? Yeah, 67%. C would be the amount we reduce by, right? So it wouldn't be C. That's actually the reduction amount. Guys, what's 33 over 100, like in D? Oh, that's 33%. So D is our other option here, because it's 1, which is 100%. Like, take away the 33%. And same situation here, right? The average temperature was 8% higher, not lower, higher. So we got to increase. So A, no. Trap door, the 0 .08 does not have the T on it. So that's a trap door. Ah, but B, 1.08, 108%. Same thing with C, 100% plus another 8%. So B and C would be our options there. Does anyone still have remaining questions on problems like those? And if you do, obviously, like, come see me if you want. Email me if you want. I've got a couple emails I need to respond to today from students. So let's check this out. Both of these are in the same format. And we already wrote down our new formula. So I'm going to scooch this up just so my video screen, like my double video screen, is not blocking it. These problems both... Oh, well, I guess I uh, need to write the formula down again since I gave away my formula sheet. You're good. These problems are both going to use the formula new equals the new percent times the previous or the original, right? This is on our formula sheet, but it's worth writing down again. Thank you so much. By the way, if you're my advisory and I haven't given you your discovery day form back yet, I have it. It needs to come back to you. We need to try to get them back here by Thursday. And in that problem, well, let's write down the information that we know. Right? So Oliver read 450 minutes this month. His goal is to read 10% more minutes next month. So actually, in this situation, we can write the next is going to equal some new percent times this month, right? Like, and they tell us this month he read how much? Yeah, 450 minutes. So the original or the previous amount, whichever you want to call it. Any last pictures? I'm doing it tomorrow. Now to figure out our new percent. We start with 100%, right? 100% would be what we had, like what we had this month. But then do we want to go up or go down in this situation? Up, I think I'm going to start calling on random people to make sure we're all awake. Oh my gosh. Amelia, I just saw your bow tie and I love it. That is awesome. I need to get a little... In winter, I dress up a bit more. I don't know why. I think it's the cold weather makes me dress, but I love bow ties because they stay up out of the way. They just look really nice. All right. So, Amelia, sorry, you got my attention pulled to you. What percent do we go up by? What's it say up there? His goal is to read... How much? Yeah, 10% more. So we're going to add 10%. Now, if we want to talk about that as decimal numbers, that's actually 1 plus 0 0.10, right? 100% is 1. 10% is 0 0.10. 
So our new percent, when we plug that in, we have to write it like a decimal. So next month is going to be 1.10, the new percentage. Right, we could, we could have written that over here, that that's 1.10 times what how much did he read this month 450 so guys we're using calculators now like some people have been coming to me and like checking are we allowed to use calculators definitely i kind of believe that because you're going to live in a calculator world like where you always have computers and cell phones and stuff uh, I only need to make you not use a calculator every so often. So if we do our 1.10 times 450, we get 495. Now be careful though, what the problem actually asks is a bit tricky. So that's next month, right? Sorry that my handwriting's a bit sloppy. Anyone tell me why this question's tricky? You may have seen it in Khan Academy already. Look at what's in bold. Isis, why is it tricky? Both months, right? So we need to take this next month and add it with the previous month. So both months combined will be 945. That's our total for both. Now really quickly, I'm going to scooch this up, but then... I would like you guys to solve that, but I'm going to keep my solution showing. I don't want you to get giant. All right, so that next problem is very similar to the one we just did. What's PETA make you think of? The Hunger Games. He's a stand-up guy, that PETA. Good with makeup, too. I love when he does his, uh, like, the painting of his, like, arms and face and everything, the camouflage. I think that's super cool. So try to get a jump start on me. I'm writing as well, but I, I want you to not be able to see what I'm writing. See, we should at least be writing down a formula. And we should at least be trying to figure out what the new percent we're going to be using here is. Or just in general, like what the percent we're going to be using here is. But really, it is going to be a new percent because we always start with 100%. So when they give us a total amount, well, okay, sorry, I should take that back. We don't always start with 100%, but there is always a 100% that we can talk about, which is all of something, right? So if I scooch this up and we talk about what is our situation here, the all of something is that PETA they tell us has 1,060 points. That's our 100%. Sorry that my screen keeps freaking out. I'll try to put a pen here and get it to stop. I can't tell if it's because the desk and the graph paper or just the graph paper. I think the graph paper might cause it to freak out. All right, there we go. 
So guys, they tell us Val is 30% fewer points than PETA. So our new percent will be the 100% of PETA. So if we want to start writing it like this, minus 30% of PETA. And that's, well, 1P, or just P, minus 0.3P, which we could put the extra 0 in there if we want. So what they tell us is Val is essentially what percent? Ooh, not 30. What is 100% minus 30%? 70% times P, right? So either we could solve the 70% P over here and figure out the new value, or we can just do the percent math in the parentheses and then multiply by P. So it's up to you how you want to solve it, whether you want to subtract using the P on the percentages or like what we did up here, just subtract your percentages and then put the variable back on. What I should have written up here is this was 110% of the previous, right? 110% of the previous. This is 70% of, well, PETA, still kind of like previous. So we can say V is 0.70 times P, or we could replace P with what number? How many points did P to have? Yeah, 1060. Somebody else grab a calculator. I know you guys are packing. It's in your backpack, it's in your binder, it's somewhere. Let's grab it out. Get those fingers nimble. I don't know if I've made you guys calculate very much this year, but I shouldn't be the only one punching buttons. That's a likely excuse. Was that someone your sister? Yeah. Bang. You said 742? Yeah. And guys, it's always good to have multiple people calculate so we can double check that we didn't make a calculator mistake. And this would be points. All right, does anyone have questions on either of those two problems? Because we're about to change the format of problem that we solved. Madeline? Yes, yeah, so parentheses against each other multiply. And remember, percent of something, if we're 70% of PETA, of tells us multiply. Of always tells us multiply. So guys... Unless somebody raises their hand to say we have a question on this, I want you to look at this problem and tell me how it's different. Anne's getting crafty in the kitchen. So there is no pressure when I go around the room and ask these questions. I just want to know what do you see, what do you know, or what do you wonder? So Drew, what do we see up here? What's this situation tell us? Yeah, and increase the recipe by 60%. So we're going to say we increase, um, let's say R for the recipe by 60%. So the situation we have, what that turns into, well, 60% of what? When we write this mathematically, we would say R, like 1R plus 0.6R. This is 100% of R plus 60% of R. Does anyone have questions on how I get to 1.60 R? We start with one of the recipe. We increase by 60% of the recipe. 
So now we've got 160%. Remember, this is 160% of R. I'm just going to write the word of since I can't fit the multiplication in there. So that is 160%, 1.60. Any questions here? I'm going to drink coffee and make sure we don't have any questions. Set up that new equation. What we had written in purple that we kind of had like our new equation. Because the new recipe, right, the new recipe So the new recipe is what of the old recipe? 160%. Now, we don't have to use parentheses. So see how I wrote this? I see some pencils not moving and I'm worried that we're not writing. Or we can put the parentheses. It's the same, guys. Parentheses are just up there for grouping. Oh, wait. Let's go back to the problem. Charlie, what do you what do you see in the problem that we haven't used yet? That, she used 80 grams of cheese. I'm going to write this off to the side because hold on. Was that 80 grams from the recipe or is that 80 grams the new amount? This is the new amount. This is the new amount. So wait, when we go to plug that into the formula, instead of putting it here, like we've been used to, we have to put it over here in the new amount on the left side. So we say 80. And we could say grams, as long as that doesn't confuse you. We don't have to keep labels in the problem while we're doing the math. But we have to make sure we have labels at the end. So 80 equals 1.60 times R. And we don't need the parentheses. I'm just pretty used to doing the parentheses. So you could also write 80 equals 1.6 times R. And that's the same. So I make sure that we see this decimal. And actually, you don't even need the multiplication dot. You wouldn't even have to show that. You could just write 1.6R. Now, this is where you all love when I bring this back. What happens when we put a number? All right, let me ask the question like this. If we want to get 1R... Our goal is to get 1R. What is the recipe? How can I turn 1.6R into 1R? CPM would tell us to use the... The what? Ooh, it's not just a big one. It's the giant one. I don't know why you guys all think this is super lame, but I find it funny that you all think it's super lame. So the giant one is dividing a number by itself, right? To make the giant one, we must divide a number by itself. When we do that on the right side, it causes us to do it on the left side as well. We grab our calculator. Our number should be smaller because the recipe amount would have used less, right? We made the recipe bigger, so the recipe amount had called for 50 grams. Any questions on that one? The tricky part is that it asks us for the original amount and it gives us the new amount, right? That's what made that tricky. And guess what? I've got another one of those. The new, 
Well, uh, it depends on how you read this question, actually. No, this one may not be the exact same as the last one. Can anyone tell us how you kind of think about this problem? Is anyone bold enough to help us out here? The family size bottle of sunscreen holds 12 fluid ounces. The regular bottle holds 75% less. Be the what? Yeah, so Isis is giving us the suggestion, make the regular bottle actually the new. So if we say that our new is a percentage of the old, right, or the previous, but we could say like new and old. Okay, so if the regular is the new, then the family bottle is the old so actually I'm gonna go ahead and write the regular bottle is is equals right 75% less than family 75% less. How do I do 75% less? What does less tell me to do? Subtract. So our regular will equal, well, we could just say the, the family bottle, right? Like F minus 75%. Am I good with what I wrote there? No, because this is not 75% until I say percent of something. This has to be percent of the thing we're talking about. So remember, this is 1F. It's 100% of F. We start with 100%. We're going to take away 75%. So the regular bottle is actually, well, what's 100 minus 75? Yeah, 25%, thank you, Victor, of the family. So what they're telling us, really, is the regular bottle is 25% of the family bottle. Which, actually, another way we could say that is that the regular bottle... What fraction is 25%? One fourth. One fourth of F. So we could either say regular is one fourth of F or regular is 0.25 F. Oh, wait. Oh, we're not done yet. Do we know R or do we know F? We know F. The other thing that they had told us that I could write off to the side, right, in like a... I like to write kind of like information clouds sometimes. F was 12 ounces. Fluid ounces, not weight ounces. Doesn't really make a big difference. So if we want to figure out how much is in the regular, regular is one fourth of 12. And if I put the 12 over one, really, I get 12 over four. Oh, well, we know what this is, it's three. Right, so our regular is three ounces, no matter if I use the decimal. Guys, and this is why I use parentheses. I just like to keep my numbers kind of grouped. 
We get three ounces. So wheat. Any questions on that one? I'd like to do at least one more. And again, guys, if you want to see more of these, please just hop on my YouTube and watch yesterday's Math 7 video. It says, like, Math 7, 11, 16, 20, solving percent problems. I think. These are not the more diff... I want to go to a more difficult problem, actually. Yeah, let's talk about this. So, I didn't solve this problem in the other math class either, so that's why I jumped through a bunch of slides, because we didn't make it to it. This is one of those really interesting problems where they're telling us something very specific. Caleb paid $1.60 in sales tax. So if we're writing down information that we know, I would say that the dollar amount of tax, and I'm going to write Caleb over here so I can remember which problem this is. The dollar amount of tax is $1.60. Now, if we go back to our formula sheet and look for our just tax formula that we wrote down, if we have just tax, well, that's got to be the percent tax times the original price, like the original whatever they had to pay. So I'm going to write down just tax equals the tax percent. I almost always use uppercase T's because lowercase T's look like pluses. Times the original bill or like in this case, it's going to be the original grocery trip. Now they tell us the tax percent in this city. Sorry, I used a lowercase t there. My bad. Is 2.5%. What is 2.5% as a decimal number? Like, what is its rate value? Well, if we do the swoop-de-swoop, -swoop, right, we really divide by 100. This becomes 2.5 over 100 because any percent is that number over 100, and it becomes 0 0.025. Guys, if it ever won't stop focusing and it's, like, causing you to not be able to read it, tell me. I will try to do whatever I can to get it to stop focusing. I really, I wonder if I give it something else. I had this thought and then I forgot it. Great, and now I thought I had, yep. So my, my curiosity is if I put something else for it to focus on, I really think it just, the graph paper confuses it. So, from here on out, let it be known, if there's a quarter in the picture, it means nothing. It's just to get the camera to focus. So, what do we know? We know what he paid in tax, so let's fill that in for the tax amount. A dollar sixty equals, do we know the tax percentage? Well, yeah, but we have to use the decimal number. So, where we have tax percentage... We have to put in the 0 0.025. Are we throwing pens now? Are we at that point? Are we just throwing pens around, Isis? Yeah. <laughs> and we don't know what the original bill is. So I'm just going to call that like G for the groceries. Is any, I'm sorry that this like slopes down. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Is anyone confused or have any questions on how we got this formula? 
then the part that I think we are mainly getting confused on is to get g by itself, we need to get rid of this number. So we have to make a giant 1. So we divide by 0 0.025, and that has to happen on both sides. When we do that division, the amount he paid in tax divided by ah, 64. So I know the light's kind of weird over here. So G is 64. Now, if anyone has any other confusions on those, I would love to solve as many percent problems as you guys want to see. Come to AO or extension. AO's a scotch tougher because I will have kids in here for my Math 2 class. Um, but come to AO and or extensions, or if you email me, like during AO, I might go to holler for you to come over here, but I may not be able to just have you guys like randomly walking in. Um, I will probably have those guys playing a game though, that, that eighth grade class that I have right then. So if you want to, you're going to time well, right? So if you want to try to pop over here and see if I'm available, you can. You can come check out if I'm free during AO. Second AO, quote unquote, I'm more free. Because that class is done at like 11.30. And then in second AO goes until like 11.50. 11.50. Okay, thank you. Precision. I appreciate the correction. Um, yeah, guys, so yesterday's class, what's on YouTube, goes through the swimming pool problem. If any of you guys got frustrated on that one. The spider, you're good, man. The spider eating bugs, Kong and Nolan with their test times, Finley's pumpkin, right, like the goblins and wizards in Magic Club, all of those problems are in the video from yesterday. And I might have fit in a couple tax problems, like Neil and his board game. I think that one's in the video from yesterday as well. So please check that out if you want some extra help. Thank you very much, guys.